Hello and a very good evening. You're watching the news at 6 on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines this evening. Polling ends for the sixth phase of elections in Uttar Pradesh. 49% voter turnout recorded till 3 p.m. for 49 seats spread across seven districts in the state. Manipur concludes voting for the first of the two-phase assembly elections in the state. 80% voter turnout reported in the state till 3 p.m. Mega roadshows and political rallies bring Varanasi to a halt. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi and BSP Chief Mayawati address voters. And in the US, 43-year-old Indian origin store owner Harnish Patel is shot dead in South Carolina. Incident comes just days after an Indian engineer was killed in a hate crime shooting. Well, let's uh, now get you the latest from the ongoing assembly elections in Verdict 2017. Forty-eight point seven three percent voting was recorded until three p.m. in the sixth phase of election in the Purvanchal region of Uttar Pradesh. No untoward incident was reported in the forty-nine assembly seats in seven districts where polling ended an hour ago. Here are the details. Polling went off peacefully in the sixth and penultimate phase in Uttar Pradesh on Saturday, with forty-nine assembly seats in seven districts going to vote. Over 1.72 crore voters exercised their franchise to decide the fate of 635 candidates amid heavy security. While Samajwadi Party patron Mulayan Singh Yadav's Azamgarh Lok Sabha constituency is one of the most prominent in this phase, the districts which voted on Saturday include Mau, Gorakhpur, Maharajganj, Kushinagar, Devariya and Balia. Good voter turnout in the morning in all the constituencies of uh, Purvanchal, but towards afternoon, voting slightly slowed down. As far as issues are concerned, people are talking about development. Overall, it looks like a triangular fight in Purvanchal region. Out dal rahe the main vikas ka mudda sabse pehle hai, aur padhai education kya hai, wo sab cha saare chije dimag mein hai. इस वजह से हम लोगों ने सुबह सुबह आके उड़ दिया हमारे यहाँ का विकास तो हुआ है इसमें कोई दोरा नहीं है लेकिन जो विकास हुआ है वो सिर्फ जो है वो कागजों पे हुआ है और वो जो है वो बड़ी बड़ी बिल्डिंगों पे हुआ है प्रोमिनेंट कैंडिडेट इन दिस फेज आर फॉर्मर यूनियन मिनिस्टर कलराज मिश्रा बी एस पी टर्न कोर्ट स्वामी प्रसाद मौर्य एंड एस पी टर्न कोर्ट अंबिका चौधरी एंड नारद राय Five assembly seats of Gorakhpur Lok Sabha constituency of BJP leader Yogi Adityanath and Mau, where jailed a gangster turned MLA Mukhtar Ansari is in the fray, also figure in this phase. While BSP has fielded candidates on all 49 seats, SP and Congress are contesting on 40 and 9 seats respectively under an alliance. BJP has its candidates on 45 seats and its allies are contesting four. No campaign was not a हमने विकास और राष्ट्रवाद को मुद्दा बनाया और जनता ने केंद्र में मोदी सरकार की कार्य पद्धति को देख करके हमारे इश्यू को हाथों हाथ लिया भारतीय जनता पार्टी पूर्ण बहुमत की सरकार बना रही है in 2012, the ruling SP won 27 of the 49 seats and its present ally, the Congress, won 4. The BJP won 7, while the BSP also bagged 7. Such was the Samajwadi Party's sweep that in 2012, it took 9 of the 10 seats in Azamgarh. With inputs from Shan Sundar and Kriti Mishra, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, our correspondents Kriti Mishra and Akile Suman join us uh, right now. Kriti Mishra is joining us from Varanasi, so let me go straight to her. Uh, Kriti, how did uh, Uttar Pradesh vote in the sixth phase? 
Uh, well, Frank, it was, accept, it was expected largely that the voter turnout would be better uh, since uh, 2012. And of course, we saw that because the Election Commission has taken a lot of efforts to actually motivate voters uh, uh, and uh, encourage them to go out and vote. And we saw that today, and specifically in several regions, uh, women came out in large numbers and they voted uh, for the political parties that they uh, wanted uh, to see in power. So certainly, as far as the sixth phase is concerned, extremely crucial phase for all all the political parties and definitely a better voter turnout now it remains to be seen when these voter when the voter turnout uh, increases whether it will favor the incumbent or it will not favor the incumbent indeed Frank. and you know as far as some of the key contenders are concerned who are the key contenders in the sixth phase kriti Well, uh, former leader of opposition of Uttar Pradesh Assembly, Swami Prasad Maurya, who was uh, who's the BSP turncoat, and of course he joined the uh, BJP. He is contesting from Kushinagar. Uh, then, of course, uh, former uh, president of BJP in the state, Shahi, he is also contesting. There are several other candidates to look out for. In fact, uh, Azamgarh and uh, Gorakhpur. Azamgarh is the parliamentary constituency of uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav, who is the Samajwadi Party patriarch. And in fact, Gorakhpur, uh, where uh, five-time BJP MP. Yogi Adityanath exercises considerable influence. So, in fact, all these seats and, in fact, also the area, it might not be that these uh, political stalwarts are fighting elections, but definitely their prestige is at stake to actually check how much of influence do they exercise on the minds of the voters. Frank? Indeed. All right. Kriti Misha, thank you for joining us there with those details. Now, impressive polling took place in Manipur in the first phase of elections in the state. Nearly 80% polling was recorded till 3 p.m. Congress and the BJP are in a tough fight in all the 38 seats of the five districts that have gone to polls on Saturday. Barring a few incidents, by and large, the election remained peaceful. The next phase of election is on the 8th of March. People started queuing up since the early hours of the morning to cast their vote. Women turned out in large numbers in the first phase of polling in Manipur. Most of them are just hoping for one thing from the new government, peace and development. I guess development of our, our constituency and also uh, territorial integrity of Manipur. We are trying to eliminate all these burns, huh. blockades. We have suffered enough. Huh. Then about the corruption and all this, we are going to uh, we want to eliminate it. The youth also voted in large numbers. They are seeking employment, education, and an end to the economic blockade. I voted uh, for the for uh, regard uh, for someone who would uh, take up developmental works here, who would uh, take uh, take uh, take into account the peop uh, the uh, development and issues that people are facing, unemployment and uh, the roads etc are also very ba bad here. So uh, I voted uh, keeping that in mind. This ke bala yo taki corruption kamti ho. करप्शन से आगे बचे सब लोग जो अनएम्प्लॉयड अनएम्प्लॉयड लोग हैं उसको कुछ नौकरी उकरी मिले There are almost 11 lakh eligible voters in Manipur in this phase and most of them exercise their franchise in both rural and urban areas of the hill state fate of 168 candidates in 38 assembly constituencies was sealed on Saturday मैं रास्ता भी चाहिए वो भालू निकल गया है ना रास्ता में वो ब्लैक टॉप चाहिए और स्कूल भी पूरा बुढ़ा हो गए यू ये भी स्कूल है ये भी और ये ऐसे ऐसे का है और देखो ये भी वैसा अच्छा कच्चा से रहती है the first phase mostly covers the region dominated by the Meitei community along with a few Naga and Kuki hamlets. This is also the area most affected by economic blockade imposed by the United Naga Council. Observers sense a strong polarization on the issue of blockade and development between the Congress and the BJP. The first phase of election is not just important for Congress and Chief Minister Ebobi Singh. This is also very important for BJP and Irom Sarmila's Praja Party. Why? because this is the region which is most affected by United Naga Council's economic blockade and this is the area where most of debates are going on about the future of Manipur. It will be interesting to see that how results come out on March 11. Akhile Suman for Raj Sabha Television with camera person Pasanto in Imphal. Well, let me bring in our correspondent Akhile Suman joining us from Impal uh, right now. You know, Akhile Suman, uh, you pointed out yesterday, that is on Friday, that there are several sensitive uh, 
you know, booths and sensitive areas in Manipur that went to polls today. Were there any incidents of uh, untoward violence or any instances of violence in uh, the, uh, the polling today? Yeah, um, je um, actually what we were not expecting at all, that incident happened in uh, Imphal city itself. The Praja Party convener, Erendro, was beaten up and he was thrashed by, by some miscreants in the city itself. And he was, he was taken to the doctor and doctor said that there is no internal injury, but there are external injury. I, I went and met him that he, uh, what happened. He told that some people were trying us not to even go to the booths. So you can understand that there is some sort of simmering in either Congress or the BJP that how Praja Party is coming with some, some sort of moral reflections or the electioneering, also all the corruption and development practices. So this is a major incident that has happened inside Imphal city. But some sporadic incidents has happened somewhere or other where there has been some clashes between BJP and Congress workers at two booths. But by and large, uh, election remained peaceful. I have gone from Imphal up to the village side, uh, you know. Uh, okay, uh, Suman, I'll have to cut you short the there because uh, the election commission is addressing a press conference at the moment about the voting. Women. Let's listen in to the election commission. The election commission's press conference. At 5 p.m. Now, last time, some of our media friends had requested for, yeah, this is 57.03% at 5 p.m. And the overall in 2012 for this jurisdiction, these areas, was 55.04. So last time, some media friends had requested for giving the exact figures of phase-wise, because every phase uh, press conference, we give the figures as they stand at 5 p.m. But now the final figures are here, and for the information of everybody, in the phase one, in 2012, the figure was 61.04, 61.04 for phase one in 2012. As against that in 2017, that means this poll, phase one has been 63.84%. Similarly, in phase two, 2012 figures were 65.17%. And in 2017, for phase two, it is 66.16%. For phase three, in 2012, it was 59.96%. And as against that, phase three for 2017 is 61.43%. For phase four, in 2012, 12, it was 60.20, percent and as against that, in 2017, it is 61.21%. And in phase 5, where the increase has been relatively less compared to the previous phases, in 2012, we had 57.05 percent and in 2017 it is 57.30 percent so these are the figures for all the five phases and phase this particular phase as i have told you as at 5 pm it stands at 57.03 percent as against 55.04 percent of 2012 so friends with this the announcement regarding the, this phase of UP elections comes to an end, but I have an important announcement to make uh, from the election commission. As all of you remember, the elections to two assembly constituencies, one Alapur in Uttar Pradesh and one Karan Pariyak in Uttarakhand, were countermanded because of the sad demise of the respective candidates. And these elections are now going to be held on 9th of March, and hence, the prohibition for the conduct and the dissemination of the exit polls.
Uh, the election commission press conference they're talking about uh, how the uh, voting has taken place over the last uh, five and of course the sixth phase as well in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, he will also mention about Manipur of course shortly. Now with the focus shifting to the last leg of assembly polls now in Uttar Pradesh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday hit the campaign trail in Varanasi, his Lok Sabha constituency. Top BJP leaders have been camping in the city to get public support in favour of their party. The Prime Minister is also expected to hold two more election meetings in the district, one each on Sunday and Monday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Saturday started his election campaign in his parliamentary constituency, Varanasi, with a massive roadshow from the Banaras Hindu University. Thousands of people were on the streets when the rally passed through Muslim-dominated areas of Sonarpua and Madanputa. As Modi's car continued to ride through the streets of Varanasi, his supporters raised slogans like Har Har Modi, Ghar Ghar Modi. After the rally, the Prime Minister offered prayers at Kashi Vishwanath Temple and Kal Bhairav Temple. इस पर मतलब पूर्व बहुमत की सरकार बनाएंगे ये और ये जो रोड शो का जो आप आकलन कर सकते हैं इसमें विरोधियों का एकदम सफाया हो गया आज से काशी का वातावरण एकदम चेंज और काशी भगवान मैं हो चुका है नारा दिया हुआ है एक भारत सिर्फ भारत पूरे देश को एक सूत्र में पिरोएंगे एक ही माला में पिरो करके पूरे देश को एक दे, बना करके मैं राष्ट्र का गौरव ऊंचा करेंगे जो हमारा भला करे वो केवल मोदी करे गरीबों का मसीहा मोदी है भारत की शान मोदी है हम मोदी को ही सपोर्ट करते हैं शॉर्टली आफ्टर द रोड शो मोदी एड्रेस्ड रैलीज एट जौनपुर एंड महात्मा गांधी काशी विद्यापीठ इन जौनपुर मोदी सेट द बीजेपी विल सेलिब्रेट होली विद द पार्टीज विक्ट्री इन द स्टेट he also targeted the ruling Akhilesh government over the alleged deteriorating law and order situation in the state. Kaam bolta hai ki karnama bolta hai. To unko bura lag gaya ki Modi ji aisa kyaun bol raha hai. To maine socha chalo bhai unhi ki sarkar ki website dekh raha hai. To maine sapa sarkar ki adhikrut jo website thi. Wo jana nikal ke dekha. और वेबसाइट में सपा सरकार ने उत्तर प्रदेश का क्या बुरा हाल किया है वो इसमें लिखा हुआ है जब बीजेपी इज कंटेस्टिंग ऑन फोर सीट्स वाई इट्स एलाई अपना दल इज फाइटिंग ऑन वन सीट आउट ऑफ द फाइव असेंबली कंस्टिट्यूएंसीज दैट फॉल अंडर वाराणसी पार्लियामेंट्री सीट ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टेलीविजन Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi and Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav held a roadshow in Varanasi on Saturday. The show of strength which was meant to rival the Prime Minister's show was attended by senior Congress leaders and Akhilesh's wife Dimple Yadav along with hundreds of party workers. BSP Chief Mayawati also held a rally at Jampur where the Prime Minister addressed a rally. A day of road shows and rallies in Varanasi, the Samajwadi Party and the Congress held a 10-kilometer long road show on Saturday. <laughs> Lending weight to the show of strength was Dimple Yadav, the wife of Samajwadi Party chief Akhilesh Yadav. Senior Congress leaders like Dolam Nabi Azad, Raj Babbar, Deependra Huda, Jitin Prasada and Dharmendra Yadav also took part in the road show. The Rahul Gandhi Akhilesh Yadav road show started from Ambedkar Chauraha before winding its way through major parts of the city. Apart from the road show in Varanasi, the SP Congress Alliance also launched a social media campaign, Chalo Kashi. The aim was to reach out to students in universities and colleges across the country. BSP Chief Mayawati also addressed a huge gathering on the day, claiming that most of the people who turned up in the roadshows of the BJP and the SP Congress are onlookers. Mayawati claimed that her party had got a huge flow of votes in the sixth phase. अपने जिले के अधिकांश विधानसभा की सीटों पर और आपकी भीड़ को देखकर तो ऐसा लग रहा है कि आप अपने बनारस की सभी विधानसभा की सीटों को जीतने का पूरा पक्का पक्का मन बना चुके हैं 
Mayawati also targeted the BJP, stating that the party did not even have a chief ministerial candidate. BJP के का जो road show था, उसके बारे में तो मुझे ये भी मालूम हुआ है कि BJP की हालत इतनी ज़्यादा ख़राब है कि उनको अपनी चुनावी जनसभाओं में तो कई कई मंडल के लोगों को बुलाना पड़ता है भीड़ इकट्ठा करने के लिए और बाहर के राज्यों से भी बुलाना पड़ता है बिहार और मध्य प्रदेश से Varanasi is going to polls on March 8th in the seventh and last phase of the assembly elections. The region has 40 seats spread across seven districts. Results will be announced on March 11th. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, the GST Council has approved the final draft of the Central GST and Integrated GST laws. The next meeting of the Council will take place on the 16th of March. The draft of the CGST and IGST bills have been cleared by the GST Council. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley expressed the confidence that the rollout of the crucial goods and services tax looked possible by 1st July. Today, the इन दोनों कानूनों पर लंबी चर्चा हुई आज और जीएसटी काउंसिल ने ये दोनों कानून अप्रूव कर दिए हैं कॉम्पेंसेशन लॉ सीजीएसटी लॉ और आईजीएसटी लॉ को जीएसटी काउंसिल का फॉर्मल अप्रूवल मिल गया है State GST and Union Territory GST will be taken up in the GST Council's next meeting on 16th of March. SGST law जो है, वो एक प्रकार से CGST law का replica है. तो एक प्रकार से उसका draft settle होना और council से approve होना एक अपचारिकता है, लेकिन जो भी उसमें सुझाव आएंगे, अगले तीन दिन में लीगल कमेटी उसको फाइनलाइज कर लेगी और फिर राज्यों को सर्कुलेट कर दिया जाएगा। The NDA government plans to take these bills to the parliament in the second half of the budget session, which begins on March 9. Vishal Dhaiya for Rajya Sabha Television. There's a roundup of the other national news and nationwide. Work on the stalled Shahpur Kandi Dam project will resume on as Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir governments have reached an agreement. The work on the hydroelectricity project, which began in 1999, was stalled three years ago due to a dispute between the two states over its design. The 55.5 meter high dam located in Gurdaspur will help in providing irrigation facilities to 5,000 hectares of land in Punjab and 32,000 hectares in Jammu and Kashmir besides generation of 206 megawatt power. The Election Commission has refused to accept the reply filed by AIADMK on behalf of Party General Secretary Shashikala to a plea challenging her appointment as Party General Secretary. Rejecting the response, EC said the signatory Dinakaran, who is Sasikala's nephew, was not in its list of party office bearers. Shashikala is presently lodged in a Bengaluru jail in corruption case. The overnight anti-militancy operation in Shopia district was called off today after militants managed to escape from the security forces' cordon. The encounter had began on late Friday night as security forces launched a search operation in Chilipora village of the district following a tip-off about militants hiding there. No casualties were reported in the encounter. Moving on to some international news now, days after the Kansas shooting, another Indian has been killed in the United States of America. A 43-year-old Indian origin store owner has been shot dead outside his home in South Carolina. Harnish Patel, the owner of a convenience store in Lancaster County in South Carolina, was found dead of gunshot wounds in front of a yard of his home on Thursday night. Patel closed his store and drove in his silver minivan to his nearby home where authorities believe he was confronted by his killer. Patel was found in the yard a few minutes before midnight.
Patel's death comes close on the heels of the shooting in Kansas of a 32-year-old Indian engineer Srinivas Kuchibotla by an American Navy veteran. Indian communities living in the area are in a state of shock and fear more such attacks in the near future. Foreign Secretary Subramaniam Jaishankar has uh, said that uh, the current U.S. government has a very positive view of India. Jaishankar, who is on a four-day visit to the United States, met U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. And the meeting comes amid concerns of possible changes to visa regulations that could hurt India's software service industry. On the issue of uh, Trump administration rethinking the H-1B visas, Jaishankar said, and I quote, the Trump administration wants to bring more companies and investments to the country and America grows. That growing America needs this partnership and I think that was a point that was registered. It is an economic issue, a trade business issue, unquote. The U.S. is believed uh, to have assured Indian India that H-1B visas will be a part of the larger immigration reforms package that the new Trump administration is working on. Although starting April 3rd, it will temporarily suspend the premium processing of H-1B visas that allows some companies to jump the queue. Meanwhile, after his meetings with U.S. officials, Jay Shankar said India does not expect any conflict between its Make in India program and U.S. President Donald Trump's push for expanding manufacturing in America. Well, the Foreign Secretary also reacted to the murder of Indian engineer Srinivas uh, Kuchi Botla, saying that uh, the U.S. has assured India that it would be prosecuted as a hate crime. Here's a roundup of the other international news and global buzz. Over a thousand civilians, some barefoot, braved cold and rain as they fled fierce fighting between the Islamic State and the Iraqi forces in western Mosul. Walking in the rain, cold and mud, the civilians arrived at a sector held by the Iraq's counter-terrorism service from where they will be moved in buses to a shelter camp. Meanwhile, 12 people including women and children are being treated for possible exposure to chemical weapon agents in Mosul. A family of a mother and four children is experiencing skin and respiratory problems after a rocket exploded at their house emitting toxic chemicals. A North Korean suspect in the murder of Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother of Kim Jong-un, said that Malaysia's probe into the assassination is a conspiracy to impair the dignity of North Korea. Ri Jong-chol, who is among eight North Koreans suspected of involvement in the killing of Kim Jong-nam, was released on Friday due to lack of evidence. He also denied any involvement in the murder, saying police had presented him with fabricated evidence and tried to bribe him into making a confession. Families of passengers aboard missing Malaysian Airlines flight MH370 attended an event to mark the anniversary of the plane's disappearance. The families are seeking to launch a privately funded search after the official one was called off. Flight MH370 carrying 239 people went missing on its way from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing on March 8, 2014. Australia, Malaysia and China jointly called off a two-year underwater search for the aircraft in January. Malaysia's transport minister Liu Tiong Lai through promised to keep up efforts to find the plane. China's defense budget will rise about 7% this year, the spokeswoman for China's parliament said on Saturday. This is its slowest pace since 2010 and it will not log a double-digit percentage increase for the second year in a row. Last year, with China's economy slowing, the defense budget recorded its lowest increase in six years at 7.6% following a nearly unbroken two-decade run of double-digit budget increases. However, a 7% rise, which is almost 1.02 trillion won, is still only a quarter of the U.S. defense budget.
Transports News now at off-spinner Nathan Lyon walked into the record books at the expense of the Indian team with a career best figures of 8 for 50 against India in Bengaluru. The Indian batting order collapsed and was bundled out for a paltry 189 on the first day of the second test. India's last five wickets fell for just 15 runs in 9.3 overs after they were 174 for five at one stage. Well, that's it on this newscast. Have a good evening.